So The Legend of Genji Episode 3 has finally arrived and let me tell you it exceeds all expectations. We're really starting to get into the meat of the story now and it's going to be really cool to see where these characters go. So hit that subscribe button down below and let's get into the episode. So the story begins at the Grand Varak Hotel in the upper ring of Ba Sing Se. This place houses all of the richest and most important people in global politics when visiting the Earth Kingdom. Nice to see our boy Varric expanded his empire out to the rest of the nations over his lifetime, and even kept the Water Tribe flair, so nice little touch. Moving inside the hotel, we enter the room of Fire Nation diplomat Hotomi Hibana and her daughter Aiko. Aiko is playing around with the extremely advanced technology of this world compared to even Korra, but her mother has some urgent business to attend to at the embassy. Aiko is annoyed by this because the two were supposed to go shopping together so that she could complete her outfit for the ball which was mentioned in the last episode. Her mother however brushes this off and says that she has plenty of shoes here. Pick one of those. With this response, Aiko is not happy at all and she doesn't even want to attend the ball because what's the point without nice shoes, right? Her mother tells her though that the point is that they are representing the Fire Nation royal family. Everything must go perfectly because there is a huge treaty between the Earth Federation and the Fire Nation being announced on this very night. We certainly wouldn't want to end up in another 100 year war situation or Yu Dao situation if you've read the comics. <laughs> After this, Aiko continues arguing, saying that the treaty has already been signed. So this whole event is just a big show. The ambassador is not happy and expects her daughter to take this responsibility seriously, so she gives in and hands her some money to buy the shoes. As long as they don't make her look taller than false avatar Luan. Now following this, we cut to Air Temple Island in the United Republic. The island is lush and beautiful as usual and we are immediately greeted by Master Rohan. You'll probably remember Rohan as the newborn son of Tenzin and Pema from The Legend of Korra. Nice to see him all grown up. Rohan then greets his two new arrivals from the Water Tribe, but one of them, Nami, doesn't seem too happy with the situation. Regardless, Rohan tries to make her feel better by showing her the beautiful greenery and herds of sky bison inhabiting the area. Right after this, we're introduced to Kao Sang who is the daughter of Kai and Jinora. That's really cool, and next to him is an airbender who is actually deaf. This could end up working in the same way as an earthbender who uses seismic sense, but for airbenders, maybe they can feel the change in air current in order to hear, in a way. Rohan introduces Nami to them and lets them know that she will be Jinora's new apprentice. Ka Sang then blurts out that she's the haunted girl, but Rohan is quick to jump in and tell the others that she's not haunted, just spiritually gifted. This is a cool connection because Jinora actually has the exact same gift, just like we saw in Legend of Korra. Either way, they soon move further into the island and the spirits immediately begin talking to Nami in the same way they do Jinora. Finally, she hides the spirit behind her back, while Kao Sang tells her that even though she grew up in the Northern Water Tribe, Nami will soon fit right in with the rest of the Air Acolytes. Moving into the Air Island kitchen, there is plenty of food to go around, but of course, no meat, since the Air Nomads remain vegetarian to this day. Thanks Aang for passing down that tradition. <laughs> Kao Sang then introduces Nami to the other Air Nomads in the same bombastic way that his father Kai probably would, reminding her that he's pretty popular around here. Nami then asks, Oh, do you know these spirits too? This confuses the others of course because they don't have the same gift that she and Jinora do and can't see the spirits. At this point, Nami is embarrassed and brushes the whole situation off, not wanting to speak of it any further. And that's where the episode comes to an end. Do you think Nami will have a major role in this series and what's going to happen when Aiko and false avatar Luan meet? Make sure you subscribe to find out as soon as it happens. Thanks so much for watching guys, really hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.